everybody. My name is Brett Hall, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about disaster recovery, and specifically how it pertains to your UC infrastructure. So um, disaster recovery is something that I'm not quite sure it's prioritized that well uh, amongst the customers that I see. And uh, the way I, the reason why I say that is because it's, um, it's not necessarily prioritized as well as organizations think it is or as they think it should be. And so um, I'll just try to give you a few examples here, right? Um, many organizations have a dis disaster recovery plan, and this is where disaster recovery always starts with a disaster recovery plan, but uh, many organizations don't necessarily have a recovery point objective that they know, um, or certainly a recovery time objective. So um, a recovery point objective simply means uh, how much data can I lose if we um, go down hard, if our servers crash. Obviously, we hope for the best, but we have to prepare for the worst. And um, having that RPO in place simply leads to the configuration on our UC infrastructure that we need to make sure is happening and, um, and happening properly. Um, the RTO simply stands for recovery time objective, which means um, how fast can we get the infrastructure back and operational if we do crash and we go down hard and we lose data. Okay, and so many organizations might have this policy in place, but yet what I see is they don't have the infrastructure for administrators to properly uh, test things like data restores of their UC infrastructure. So therefore, whenever I ask somebody, they just don't know how long it might take to, to restore all the data, the data in their cluster. Um, so... Um, and some of this has to do with organizational squabbling, if you will. But um, what I see sometimes is you have your UC team that is typically responsible for managing your, um, your communications manager, your present servers, your Unity connection for voicemail. And then you have your server team. And when it comes down to the time to, to start doing backups, either the server team doesn't even provide the UC team with a SFTP server that they need for the backups, or they're doing maintenance on it and they're just not quite um, notifying the UC team that maybe this SFTP server is down because they're trying to save power or, or whatever, you, whatever you have. So um, there's some struggles around an organization getting consistent and regular backups that they would need to meet their RPO and RTO. Um, last but not least, and again, we've kind of already touched on it, is the restore process. So hopefully this, uh, this talk helps encourage you to get back into um, the weeds a little bit with your disaster recovery policy and just making sure that, uh, that your UC infrastructure is set up to um, provide the best possible RPO and RTO as possible. So um, now that we've talked about some overlying principles, um, I want to talk about some of the key components that uh, are part of a Cisco UC infrastructure. So um, within a Cisco UC infrastructure, and particularly we're talking about things like Unified Communications Manager and Present Server, um, you have the disaster recovery system um, button that you can go to, and I'll show you that here in a few minutes. But uh, separate, it's a separate function or component of your UC infrastructure that you use to configure things like backup devices, and you would also use to restore your cluster if you had a loss of data. Um, within the cluster itself, you have something called a master agent and a local agent, and uh, Simply speaking, the master agent is kind of like the puppet master and it's controlling the, uh, the backup 
process with some of the local agents of your cluster, whether it's subscribers or subordinate servers like uh, I'm in present server. Um, this connection is secure. And so um, it uses an SS SSL connection between, um, between master and uh, local agents. And uh, the way that works is through the IPsec certificate. And so again, sometimes um, you don't really know why certain certificates are in your cluster, but, uh, but Cisco is all about security by default and the IPsec certificate is, uh, is what is used to create that secure SSL connection between master and local agents. Um, then of course you have your backup devices and, and within Cisco's UC infrastructure, you can create up to 10 different backup devices. So you say, Brett, you know, why would someone need that many different backup devices? Uh, I can think of at least um, a few different reasons why you might have at least three or four backup devices. Um, depending on what your um, recovery point objective is, you may have at least a monthly backup but if you have a RPO of a week, then you're going to want to have a separate backup device for a week and then maybe even a day. And then from there, you may want to have multiple different backup devices. So you may want to back up your device, um, your data to two separate devices, to two separate um, SFTP servers. And so that really quickly gets us to six different backup devices. So um, that's with the SFTP server. And then from there, um, your login credentials. Again, uh, SFTP does require authentication. And so you'll always want to make sure you um, have the right login credentials. And, and again, if the server team changes login credentials, sometimes that happens to comply to security policy. Uh, you'll want to make sure you change those as well so that you get those backups like you would expect. Um, I did talk about sometimes how the server team and the UC team don't always communicate the best, such as rotating passwords or, or things of that nature. Um, I had a customer that, uh, I hate to say it, but they, um, they didn't know that the, the server team changed the security password. And so they weren't monitoring the backups and uh, they didn't know uh, that it had been like 76 days um, between their last successful backup and where they were today. And so, um, so fortunately, Cisco provides SFTP servers that the UC team can manage in-house. And um, that SFTP server is called Prime Collaboration Deployment. Um, Prime Collaboration Deployment um, is typically used for things like migrating UC servers you think about like a physical server like we used to have in like 8.6 to a virtual server um, or to perform various other types of tasks like upgrades or, or re-IPing some servers in your cluster. It's a GUI interface that organizations can use to do that. Now, personally, um, I'd rather just do it through the command line. Um, I want to see what's going on. I'm kind of all, you know, obsessive compulsive about that. But, uh, but what I do love about PCD is the fact that it provides organizations with a free SFTP server. So they don't necessarily have to depend on the, the server folks within an organization to perform regular backups. Uh, that's because PCD has a built-in SFTP server. And so we'll look at that again here today. So at a high level, that's the... That's the quick and dirty of disaster recovery and um, PCD. Really quickly, um, what I want to do is kind of show you what I'm talking about with this IPsec certificate. So again, if we look at my subscribe, my communications manager publisher, um, this is it. It's called cucm-pub.ciscopucks.com, and you can see the self-signed certificate here for IPsec, and also it has an IPsec trust certificate. But then if I look at another server in my cluster, what I have is an IPsec trust for that publisher node. And so if I were to go in here and just maybe I didn't understand what the certificate was and 
I just click, you know, chose to click on it. And then I'm like, hey, uh, I don't know what this is. Let me delete this certificate. Um, chances are you would have some pretty undesirable uh, result of that. And uh, your backups probably wouldn't uh, perform as you would expect. So keep an eye out on your IPsec uh, certificates. This is something that's kind of done by default. You don't really need to go in there and add any certificates unless you really want to sign them with a CA or something. But um, these are all built by default. And then from a services perspective, uh, let me show you where the let me show you where that agent is at. Remember, I talked about a um, two different types of agents. I talked about a master agent and a local agent. So you should find this under Unified Serviceability Tools Control Center Network Services, and. Uh, if you just scroll down a little bit, um, you'll see here under backup and restore services, your Cisco DRF local, which should be running on every single UC server in your cluster. And then you should also have DRF master. Now, um, if we go to, and if you want the backups to run, these should be running obviously. But then last but not least, you have your disaster recovery system that you can navigate to. So I'm just gonna quickly navigate to this disaster recovery system and log in. I have a different login for this. And while I'm doing that, um, you can see that I have a very simple interface. I have backup tab and a restore tab. Um, backup tab is where you add your backup devices and restore is where simply you would follow a wizard for uh, restoring any kind of data that you may have lost in the event of a disaster. So before I go into backup, uh, I want to pull up my, um, my SFTP client just to kind of show you how I could um, monitor the status of my backups, um, or maybe even like move different types of files into PCD for things like um, a fresh install. So uh, you have your directory on the left. And um, as I mentioned, uh, I would connect to this through, through port 22 um, using SFTP protocol. Um, the default username is admin SFTP, and then the password is whatever you used when you set up uh, PC during their, um, their installation process. But um, as you can see here on the right, I have this backup directory, and, um, and I have two different directories under that. I have my directory for, U uh, for UCM, and you can see these tar files in here. So you can see I just completed a backup today. And... Um, and then you also have the same thing for um, for Unity Connection. And so I think I did my last backup uh, last week on the 7th. So um, backups look good. Um, if, if, for example, I wanted to um, go back in and just periodically check the history of my backups, uh, you have this backup history um, button. And again, you can see uh, where I did my backup here today. Um, Actually, I had a failure with my IMP node because for whatever reason it was turned off. I had a power hit yesterday and I forgot to turn it back on. Um, so I'll have to go back in there and, and rerun this backup manually, um, which can be done here through manual backup. But then certainly you have a scheduler as well. And uh, this is where I was talking earlier about your RPO. So again, you might want to have a monthly backup um, which is kind of what I have set up. Uh, I've given a meaningful name, but uh, I back up monthly to this this guy, this free SFTP server, and then I back up weekly to my PCD node. And uh, you can see the path here, which is also set up under the backup device. Um, and this backup device, for example, um, it matches my path within PCD, right? So 
this is my IP address of PCD, um, slash backup slash CUCM, matches my directory uh, that I want to back up my stuff to. And um, if you have, I think PCD re retains two backups. And so if you have it set for weekly, um, you should have um, two weeks of, um, of backups, of data backed up there. If you do the third backup, it's just going to overwrite the oldest uh, backup. So um, that's another reason why you might want to schedule different types of um, backup devices. So you may not want to overwrite um, that third backup. Instead, you may want to go back a month and, uh, and have a separate backup device for, um, for your monthly backups. So, um, so that's really it with disaster recovery and, uh, and how it pertains and how it can be configured within Cisco UC. I hope this means um, that uh, you're going to go back in and check out your system to make sure everything's functioning properly and uh, that your organization doesn't have any issues at all um, with any kind of data restoration process. Obviously, again, we always hope for the best. But, uh, but if you're a prepper like me, um, you want to always make sure you prepare for the worst. And that's what disaster recovery system was, uh, was included into your Cisco UC infrastructure for. Um, if you like the video, go ahead and hit like and uh, subscribe. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks. Have a great day.